Hello everyone, welcome back to our class in Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning and Finance. And after having seen the lasso and the rich regression, one can ask oneself whether one can combine actually the lasso and the rich regression as the two most uh, well-known types of penalized linear regression models. And actually, yes, you can combine them to overcome the shortcomings of both the lasso and the rich regression we've seen in the previous video. And this combination is called the elastic net regularization. And actually, the elastic net is quite simple. You take, um, again, the RSS, the residual sum of squares, and then you take the penalty terms from the lasso and the rich regression. As you might well know, the two are the absolute, uh, the sum of the absolute uh, parameter coefficients. Um, here, uh, seen here, here, where's the cursor here, uh, with uh, lambda 1, and the sum of the squared coefficients with uh, the second tuning parameter, uh, lambda 2. So they are both added to the residual sum of squares. And then again, we are trying to minimize um, this penalized sum of squares. And then when we've found the coefficients beta, we have our um, coefficient estimates for the elastic net regularization. And as I've said before, um, the elastic net overcomes some of these um, shortcomings of both the lasso and the rich regression. And later on in the application, we'll see all three of them, lasso, rich regression, and the elastic net. Now, the question we haven't talked about is how to choose the tuning parameters for both the lasso, the rich regression, and the elastic net, of course. Now, recall the distinction between the test error rate and the training error rate. And recall the fact that if we have a data sample, especially in machine learning and statistical learning, um, we usually divide our data sample into, um, well, it could be that we already have a training data set and a test data set, or we artificially divide it up into some training observations and test observations. Now, if a sufficiently large test data set is available, then of course the training and the test error rate are easy to calculate. What are the test error rate and the training error rate? Well, if you fit a model and you look at the error uh, on um, of the model on your test, uh, sorry, on your um, training data, um, on the data you've used to fitting the model, then you have the training error rate. And usually when you fit a model, the training error rate will be very small because that's actually, if you look at this, the RSS, for example, as a very simple um, measure of the model fit of the um, training data error um, is minimized in order to find the coefficients. So this will be minimal, of course. Um, if you have fitted the model and take the model to new observations, to um, test observations, you can again calculate some uh, metrics um, uh, of the model fit of your errors and you get the test error rate. And if the data set is large enough, if you have sufficiently large test data, then it is easy to calculate the training and the test error rate. Often, however, this is not the case. For example, you only have um, a few test observations. You might only have one test observations or you have no test observations at all. And the possible remedy in this scenario is the so-called validation set approach, which means that you randomly divide the available set of observations into two parts. You declare one part uh, to be the training set and the second part to be the validation or also sometimes called the holdout set. And then the model is fitted on the training set and the fitted model is used to predict the responses for the observations in the validation set. So this is the validation set approach. Um, it's shown here. Um, imagine you have n observations, numbered one, two, three, and so on until n. And then you divide these n observations into uh, the training set shown in blue. Um, for example, it could be uh, observations 7, 22, 13, then maybe 50, 17, and so on. And then you have uh, the validation set, um, which is used to calculate the test error rate, um, which is shown in beige. The drawbacks here 
R, where the validation estimate of the test error rate can be highly variable because which observations are randomly chosen in the training and validation set. This is random, so depending on which observations enter the blue and the beige path, um, the test error rates can actually differ from each random assignment to the next random assignment. And next problem is that we initially had n data observations and now only a subset of the available data are used to fit the model. So we are actually wasting a lot of our data um, by uh, leaving it out, by holding it out and only using, let's say, half of our n observations for um, training the model. And this is uh, a serious drawback, especially if we have finite data. So what can we do? We can actually do uh, cross-validation um, to calculate the test error uh, rate. So what we do is uh, we have our n observations and in the first setting uh, we use the first observation which is shown in beige. We use the first observation as our test observation and we fit the model on the n minus one remaining observations, so observations two, three, four, and so on until n. Then we're using almost all the observations for fitting the model, for training our model, and estimating the error um, based on the test observation number one. For example, it could be the mean squared error, it could be, um, it could be the um, uh, sum of squares, actually, uh, or the squared. And then um, we do this another time. We fit a second model. And now for the second model, we use observations 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. until n for fitting the model. And we check the out of sample, the um, test error, based on the test observation number 2. So we get a different mean squared error. And so on and so on. And we do this n times until uh, we are using the last observation as a test observation. And this will give us n squared errors, n metrics uh, for the test error. And we will then simply average all these errors and we get an estimate for the training um, rate, uh, the test error, let's say. As you can see, because we always leave one out, this is called leave one out cross-validation, quite simple. Um, it's quite simple then next to um, um, extend this to the so-called k-fold cross-validation. Um, we will again start with n observations in our data sample. And now in k-fold cross-validation, for example, in um, could be five um, k-fold cross-validation, we subdivide our observations, our data sample, into five bins. And as you can see, uh, this is the first bin. So this is actually um, the first set. This is used for um, as the uh, test data and the model is fitted on the remaining observations. Then we do it in the next uh, bin of size, um, actually n divided by um, five in this case. And then we have k resulting mean squared errors and we again average these and we have an estimate for the test error rate. So this is k-fold cross-validation and this can be done again to estimate the test error rate. Now, in the next video, I want to show you the application of both the lasso, the rich regression, and the elastic net, and also how you can choose the parameters via cross-validation.